Orders of the day, government orders, government bills, commons, consideration at second reading of Bill C-45, the Cannabis Act. Ms. Uh, Wilson-Raybould. Uh, A majority of Canadians no longer believe that simple possession of small amounts of cannabis should be subject to harsh criminal sanctions. Young people, young Canadians, kids, youth and teenagers and teenager youth, young adults, young people, young people, young people, young person, young people, youth criminal justice, the young person, the young person, youth possession, the young person, for youth is youth, youth, young person, youth, young person, young people, protect youth. Youth, kids, youth, 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 youth. She mentioned at least on six occasions during her speech that uh, the Liberals were very interested in protecting youth. I would ask her, is there any easier way for young people to get marijuana? You'll see that kids eat plants all the time because um, their parents don't put them up in the cupboards. What happens then, Mr. Speaker, when a 12-year-old uh, is... Uh, uses or distributes cannabis to his peers on the playground every day with no questions asked. And in fact, they will probably become the drug mules at the school. The quality of marijuana uh, that our children will be smoking will be increased. The people who love to sell drugs around schools or sell that and come, come back to, to see us. We're worried about the victims, the victims. Right. of There is no safe, there's no safe level on this. Be impaired as long as 24 hours after smoking a moderate dose of cannabis. Um, prescription drugs are up in the, uh, the medicine cabinet here that children could have access to. You can protect uh, children against the, 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 uh, medical uh, prescriptions here by making sure that they are, yeah, my colleagues are t pointing out to the white waves we can do that. Of course we can. Get rid of that whole thing about the, f the four plants. Get the plants out of people's houses here. Right. Nobody wants that. Nobody yeah. wants that, Mr. Speaker. Is there any easier way to get marijuana? I've seen photographs. As hot is a benign judge that is not any cause for concern. Researchers have found that under prohibition, cannabis users, for the most part, even in times of e easy access, moderate their cannabis use such that it does not interfere with their lives or lead to adverse health consequences. We have had marijuana criminalized in this country since 1923, and I believe, based on the statistics, it's about it's time for a change. It's time for a new approach, and this is an important first step. We could probably you know, stand firm in the world and, and promote an alternative way of dealing with drug issues rather than the old failed law and order approach. The, the crime that still exists in this country for simple possession is profoundly unjust for a substance that the government is going to legalize. Our justice system is clogged up. We have serious criminal charges that are either being stayed or withdrawn. This is all in light of the Jordan decision, yet this government refuses to act on an initiative which would free up so many police resources, so many justice resources that are so sadly needed in our country right now. We feel that those who have received previous convictions for marijuana possession should have some form of amnesty offered. Arresting and prosecuting cannabis offenses is expensive for our criminal justice system and it traps too many Canadians in the criminal justice system for minor, non-violent offences. Possession, production, distribution, importation, exportation and sale outside of the legal framework would be illegal and subject to criminal penalties, up to a maximum penalty of 14 years imprisonment. It does allow for a punishment of up to 14 years for anyone over the age of 18 who sells marijuana to a young person. Uh, this is a fairly harsh punishment. It's actually in line with uh, the production of child pornography and attempting to leave Canada to commit terrorism. And I know it gives judicial discretion, but it is a pretty um, harsh punishment for this, and I, I think we need to look as to whether this complies with the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. She has acknowledged the harms that criminal prohibition and punishment does to our society, particularly youth and racialized Canadians. This government has now been in power for almost 20 months. Many regimes around the world have instituted decriminalization quite well. I still have not heard a good argument from the Liberal government why they will not institute this as a good interim measure on the road to legalization. This is about trying to save our youth. It's not about promoting the use of the drug. It's about trying to save our youth from going through the criminal justice system. Dealers are selling cannabis to children in the schools, the, even the elementary sco schools, that the cost of selling drugs is going to be extremely high.
Because what we'll see now is an industry that's going to create billionaires, but billionaires who uh, will be uh, become billionaires because of government largesse. Crony capitalism. For the rest of us, it's bread and circuses. So it's one set of justice for the wealthy and well-connected, another set of justice for those poor and marginalized groups. Many people in small towns, when the economy is, t is tough, have turned to growing cannabis and selling it. Trying to ensure that small growers, which are very prevalent on parts of my writing, uh, continue to have a role in the future of legalizing cannabis in Canada. And if not, I can pretty well guarantee you that uh, there will continue to be a black market for marijuana. So interested in the uh, members' views on trying to ensure that co-ops and small growers are part of the future. There are many people in what might be described as a craft industry of edibles for pain relief. They're enormously rigorous about what they produce. I wouldn't want to see them forced out by large corporate interests. Just uh, to the benefit of all uh, honourable members, uh, remind uh, that uh, during the time for questions and comments, uh, which, uh, by the way, has been uh, quite uh, subscribed to this evening, there's lots of interesting questions and comments. 3,300 people stayed on the phone for an hour. What are they proposing? That every household, including households with children, will be able to have four plants. And we know that four plants is 12 plants. I think a reasonable person would say, uh, no, that doesn't make any sense. Legalize and strictly regulate cannabis in order to keep profits out of the hands of, out of, the hands of youth and, and keep profits from criminals in the gangs. And, and, uh. Clearly, the only way to hold the government accountable today is to catch them red-handed they'll be left. They're able to legally walk around with 60 joints in their pocket or their backpack. 18 and older, backpacks full of joints. Legalize it, make it available, they can grow it in every home. Children can have it in their possession legally uh, and it will not be able to be confiscated. Day. Canadians, if they think that they can drive under the influence, they will know that there is these little uh, uh, strips that will indicate that there is marijuana in the person's system, but it does not determine whether or not there's impairment. During my time in the emergency room, I have resuscitated patients who have overdosed on opioids, cocaine, and it should be noted, Mr. Speaker, alcohol. But never have I had to resuscitate anyone who was only under the influence of marijuana. To begin with, let me tell all my colleagues that, first of all, I'm not an expert. And uh, secondly, I'm not a doctor. And thirdly, I'm not a police officer, nor am I a scientist. Fifthly, I have not studied to an extent that I would be an expert in drug consumption. And I've, had, I've been worried about the same thing since this bill came out. For, firstly, the government wishes to take the profits of a drug trade out of organized, away from organized crime. And secondly, they're saying that they want to reduce access to marijuana for young people. Mr. Speaker, that makes no sense at all. Education is, is the key here. And, and, and education, not fear-mongering, but based and grounded in facts. And education focused on responsible use. Do 43% of Canadians who say that they've used cannabis in their lifetimes deserve criminal records of these criminals? If I consume a substance and harm no one else in doing so, do not harm myself in doing so, why is it a crime? That spending over four million dollars a year to prosecute marijuana possession, simple possession, uh, 22,000 people that got a criminal record in 2014 alone, um, hours of court time, all for something that the government and the a great majority of the uh, community that I hear from agree should not be a criminal offence at all. And so given that uh, 
young Canadians in particular are uh, most likely to end up with a criminal record for simple marijuana possession, given that it's taken this government quite some time to get to this point in its mandate um, and fulfil a major election promise, and given the extreme impacts of a criminal record on young people, I'd like to hear the members' comments on how we can move towards removing the penalties for simple possession uh, well ahead of the July 1, 2018 implementation. I do believe that it is important for post-prohibition licensing to include small producers and co-ops and not just the large corporations who are currently offering medical marijuana. Uh, it's almost midnight, I'm getting tired, I can't even remember what I was going to say. But The war on drugs has cost billions of dollars. It has not produced the results that we as a society had hoped for, that we demand, and a new approach needs to be taken. In other words, you might be able to grow cannabis, but we don't know how you'll get a license. You might be able to buy it, but we don't know where. You might be able to smoke it, but we don't know when.